Hello everybody, today we will be continuing the topic of the continuous system and we will be dealing continuous system and we will be dealing with some method how to solve, I mean some method which will be useful to solve the problems which are described by partial differential equation and the name of it, it will be the separation of variable method. Sometimes you can find the name that it's a Fourier method. Okay, and how it works? Generally, let's firstly, we have to define our problem. We will be dealing with the linear partial uh, equation. For example, it will be uh, d square u over dt square equals c square times du, the d uh, square u over d uh, x square. We know that it's a equation uh, which describes the dynamics of the continuous rod or the continuous string. In our case it will be, for example, following system, I mean such a rod which will be fixed at the ends, let's say. Oh, here we have the fixation of the second end and also if we want to deal with that thing we have to put some numbers, I mean the Young modulus the area of the cross-section and the density. And if we have such a problem, which is such a problem which is describes such an equation, we are able to find the stationary solution if we assume that it has a product form. I mean, we will be assuming, we will be predicting that the x of, I mean, u of, I mean u of x t will be expressed as a product of the two functions. One will be responsible of the spatial coordinate, second will be connected with the time evolution of our uh, solution. I mean it will be the time evolution of our process under consideration. And if we have such a um, product form of our solution, then it's easy to compute that partial derivatives. Because look, if you, for example, if we are dealing with the second time derivative, I mean with the acceleration, then we are getting that first component will be the constant from the point of view of the partial differentiation and here we have the second derivative of the time component. The same situation is if we are talking about the spatial derivative, I mean if we are talking about the curvature, uh, no, if we are talking about the uh, first derivative of the uh, stress because here we have the situation where there will be unchanged time uh, dependent variable and here we have the second spatial derivative of our function which is responsible of the shape of our thing. Okay, and now we, can, we are able to substitute our predicted solution into governing equation and you are getting that it's a x of x times t double dot of t. In the next steps I will be omitting that uh, independent variables in our case. I mean here we have the t uh, of t times x double prime of x. And after simple recom uh, recomputations, I mean after simple rearrangement, if we divide everything uh, by x of x and t of t, of t we are getting such a formula. I mean we have that t double dot over t is equal c squared times x double, oh, sorry, x double prime over x. Where t double prime, t double dot over t it will be some function of time, uh, x double prime over x it will be some function of x, only x. It means that here we have the one variable function and here we have again single variable function but it's uh, based on the time, that thing is based on the spatial coordinate. And in the next step also we'll divide everything over c square to make that component free. I mean we are getting c square times t double 
prime over t equals x double prime over x. And now we see that we have the separated form of our variables because we see that on the one side, on the left side, we have only the element connected with the time. On the other side, we have only the elements connected with the spatial coordinate. And what we will assume next? Because it's, like I mentioned previously, because it's uh, only the function of time and that fu function is only the function of the spatial coordinate, it's only the one situation, one case, where the any kind function of the time can be equal of the sum function of x. It's only for the constant value function, okay? It means that we, if we want to fulfill that equation, we have to put here some constant value, okay? And because, due to my experience, we need some special form of it, we will assume that it will be negative number. To be sure that it will be negative number, I will take some any number k, I will take the square because then I will be sure that I will be speaking about the positive number and I will put minus here, okay? Of course we can predict that side in any form, but for our further computation, for our easier further computation, we are assuming that it will be some negative number. And number in such a form, we can be sure that it will be the negative number. Okay, and now we have the two equations one equations based uh, of that thing and that thing. Second thing, uh, second equation, it will be the comparison between that component and that component. Let's start with the spatial component. It will be such a thing. Okay, and after simple rearrangement, we are getting that it will be x double prime equals minus k square times x. And if we put everything on the one side, we are getting that it's a k square times x equals zero. And now we see why I assume that it's a negative value. Because now if I assume that the right hand side of that equation it will be the negative value, we are getting the equation which is exactly the same as uh, equation, governing equation of the harmonic oscillator. And now it will be easy to find solution because using typical methods we know that the roots of the characteristic polynomial will be 1, 2, uh, plus, minus, i, k, and due to such and roots, we know that the predicted solution, or maybe, the, in other words, the solution of the homogeneous problem, I mean the general solution of the homogeneous part, it will be exactly a times sine kx plus b times cosine x cosine kx, sorry. And now we are able to solve our problem. It is everything if we are talking about the general solution of our governing equation. Now, if we want to find more, we have to apply, uh, we have to apply the boundary condition. I mean, we have to solve the boundary value problem, BVP. Okay, uh, and what we have, what kind of the boundary condition we have here? It's simple because we see, because our, our rod is fixed uh, at the both ends, it means that the displacement at that point, I mean displacement at zero and for any time will be zero, and the same situation is visible here, I mean displacement of the end of our rod for any time will be also zero. It means that it's our boundary, oh sorry for that, it means that it means that our boundary conditions are as follows. Of, are, are as follows. of course, I will rewrite that formula. I mean, we have that u of 0 t is 0, u of, z, u of l t is also 0, and it leads to such conditions. Because we know that the u of x t is uh, x of x times t of t, it gives us such and formulas. I mean u of 0 t it will be x of 0 times t of t equals 0. It means that x of 0 is exactly 0. The same situation if you are talking about the second end it will be x of l times t of t and it's exactly 0 which, cause, which causes that it's t, sorry, 
it, it causes that x of L is exactly zero. And now we can apply our boundary conditions and we will be able to get the values of k which will fulfill our uh, governing equation. Let's do it. I mean, firstly, let's put the x of 0 is 0. What we are getting? From the one side, we know that it will be 0. I mean, from that side. From the other side, we know that it will be a times sine k times x, but this time x is exactly 0. It means that entire expression is 0 plus b times cosine k 0. What does it mean? It means that here we have 1. It means that b, that entire part, entire site is equals b. It means that b is 0. In the next step, we are dealing with the second end, I mean the x of L. And we are getting such a condition, I mean the a times sine kL plus b times cosine kL. But from the previous condition, we see that b is exactly 0. It means that here we have nothing more 0. It means that at the end we have a times sine k l equals zero. Of course, like in case of the multi-degree of freedom dynamics, it's not possible to assume that the a is zero because it will be the trivial solution. Of course, it's obvious that there is such a solution where there isn't any vibration, but it's not especially interesting from our point of view. It means that we are dealing with the sine k l times zero. When or what k uh, are fulfilling that condition, if the k times l will be 0, or pi, or 2 pi, or some bigger natural numbers, we are getting that it will be 0. Because such a numbers, I mean the 0 pi, 2 pi, and so on, are fulfilling that condition. It means that the k l, it will be some natural number n times pi, where n belongs to the natural number. And what is important here? Now we got the sentence, uh, sorry, we, now we got the sequence of the numbers. It means that we have to indicate that fact somehow, and that is why I will put the subscript end like in case of the uh, sequences. Okay? It means that our kn, which is fulfilling our governing equation, is as follows. And now we are able to draw the eigenmodes. I mean, our first solution, x1, it will be some unknown amplitude a1 times sine, and it will be for the first number, I mean it will be for the 1, n1. And it will be because, as you see, 0 is not especially interesting for us, because it's 0. Uh, it means that we have the n times pi, n times pi over l times x, and it will be the first mode, second mode will be getting exactly in the same way, I mean it's a, a 2 times sine and it will be 2 n pi uh, over L times, oh sorry, my bad. In that case everything is right but I made a mistake here. I mean, we don't have n here because now we are taking the element of that sequence. It means here we have, maybe I change the color to emphasize the error. Here we have the 1, here we have the 2. It will be here. I mean, here we have the 2 pi times x. Okay, and second mode. Further mode can be uh, computed exactly in the same way. I mean, if we are talking about the plots of the first and second mode, it will be such a thing. First mode, it will be such a curve. It's a x1. The second mode, maybe by the blue line, will be as follows. Okay, and it's a x2. And on the that axis we have the x, on the that axis we have the particular nodes, I mean x n. I mean the special solution of our problem. Okay, as you see, it's not especially complicated to utilize the separation of variable method. It's quite easy and we are getting the solutions in a really, really fast way. Thank you for attention, guys. See you next time. We will be continuing topic of the continuous system.